lesson 5.3c using multiple percents. So we're going to use multiple percents in a word problem. Some situations require applying more than one percentage to a problem. The bill at a restaurant has a percentage added for the state tax and we may leave a tip for the server as a percentage of the cost of the food. We buy a shirt on sale and need to subtract the percentage of the discount, then need to pay a percentage of sales tax on that discounted price. When calculating the amount for a tip for food service, we decide the percentage we will use based on the quality of service we received. That percentage is based only on the cost of the food and not the sales tax. We don't want to tip for sales tax. If the food was $10, and there's 40 cents sales tax, that would be $10.40. If we decide to leave a 20% tip because the service was very good, we leave a 20% tip on the $10 of food, not the $10.40 with the sales tax. We do $10 times 20% written as a decimal. That tells us we're going to leave a $2 tip. We pay $12.40. We pay $2 more than the total price with tax. The Jones family went out for dinner, and the price of the meal was $48. The sales tax on the meal was 5%, and they left a 15% tip for their server. What was the total cost of their meal? So we think... We need to identify the important information. It's important that the price of the meal was $48, that the sales tax is 5%, and there's a 15% tip. The total cost will be the meal price, the tip, and the sales tax. Our plan is we're going to calculate the tip, then we're going to calculate the sales tax for $48, then we're going to add them for a total cost. The tip on $48, we're going to multiply 48 times 15% written as a decimal. That's $7.20. The tax on $48 for 5% written as a decimal would be $2.40. Now we total the $48 for the meal, the tip, and the tax. We get $57.60. We can estimate to check our answer, $48 is close to $50, and a 5% tax plus a 15% tip, well, that's 20%. We find 20% of $50 by doing 20% written as a decimal times $50. Remember, when we see 20% or some percentage of a number, we think of the word of as a multiplication symbol. So that would be 20% times $50. That's $10. And $50 plus $10 is equal to $60, which is close to our answer, $57.60. So our answer is reasonable. And since the tip is a greater percentage than the dollar amount of the tip is greater than the dollar amount of the tax. Finding 10% of an amount can quickly be found by moving the decimal point one place value to the left. If we have 10% of $40, we just move this decimal point one place value to the left. That gives us $4. We know that 10% of $40 is equal to $4. And 1% would be 40 cents, moving the decimal two places. If we needed only 1% of $40, we would move the decimal point two place values and we'd get 40 cents. Now, also for 10%, we just multiply by 10% written as a decimal. But we can just quickly do it by moving the decimal point one place value for 10%. Knowing this, we can quickly calculate other percentages by using mental math. If 10% of $40 is equal to $4, well, then 5%, which is half of 10%, is half of $4, it would be $2. And then 20%, which is 2 times 10%, is 2 times $4, that would be $8. 
and 30%, which is 3 times 10%, is 3 times $4. That would be $12. We could quickly do it using mental math if we can figure 10%. We can write an expression for the cost of the Jones family meal using properties of operations as the product of a percent and the bill for the meal. We know the cost of the meal was $48, the sales tax is 5%, and the tip is 15%. We can write $48 times the tax written as a decimal, and we add it to $48 times the tip of 15% written as a decimal, plus $48 times 1. That's the identity property. I'll show you why we need to do that in one second. Because $48 is being multiplied to this one, to this one, and to this one, we can just write $48 on the outside of parentheses and add the 5% sales tax as 0 0.05 plus the 0 0.15 for the tip plus that one. That's using the distributive property. We have $48 times the 5% tax. We have four plus $48 times the 15% tip plus $48 times one. We use the identity property to multiply that $48 times one so the distributive property will work and give us $48. If we didn't have this here, we would just have these two, but we would still need to add $48. We need to multiply the $48 times this 5% to find the sales tax. Then we need to multiply the $48 times the 15% to find the tip, but we still need to add the original amount, the cost of the meal, $48. And that's what that is. We can write an equation and a proportion that we can use to find the total cost C of their meal if we're given the price P, which we know is $48. And again, the tip is 15% and the tax is 5%. We're going to write these as decimals. So we have C is equal to 1 and 20 hundredths P. We're going to multiply these together. We multiply the price, that's P, by 100% plus 5% plus 15% as 120% or 1 and 20 hundredths. We have 100 divided by 120 is equal to P divided by C, the price divided by the total cost C. If we cross multiply, we will find C. We do 120 times this 48. And we're going to get 5, 7, 6, 0. We need to find what C is. Well, 100 times C should also equal 5, 7, 6, 0. So what can we multiply by, whatever C is, that will give us a 5, 7, 6, 0, a 5,760? Well, we can do 5,760. So that would be our 5760 for our total cost. When we cross multiply this way and it we get a product, then we know whatever this is will be the same product. This C total cost must be $57.60. Emma bought three blouses that each cost $29.99. She has a coupon for a 20% discount, and the sales tax is 8 and 25 hundredths percent. What is her total cost? So we think, well, there's three blouses at $29.99 each. We multiply the $29.99 times 3, and we get a subtotal of $89.97. Now, we need to take off for the coupon. We remove the 20%. So, to find 20% of $89.97, we multiply the 20% written as a decimal, and we get $17.99. Now, here's what happened. When I did the multiplication, I got $17.994. Well, because this is money and there's only two place values here, and the 4 told the 9 to stay the same, it didn't round up, 
I used $17.99. We subtract that from the $89.97 and we find out that 20% off is $71.98. Now we have to add the tax and the tax is 8 and 25 hundredths percent. So remember, when we switch this to a decimal, we're going to come over two hops with the decimal point and put a zero here as a placeholder and remove that percentage sign. So we've got our $71.98 times the tax as 0 0.0825. We get $5.94 tax. Now we need to add the tax to the sale amount that had the 20% discount. We get $77.92. When I multiplied to find the tax, I got a 5.938350. Now, knowing that this is money, we can only have two place values for the cents. This 8 told the 3 to round up to a 4. That's how I got the $5.94. We round up to the next penny and got $5.94 for our tax. We're finished with Module 5 and we're moving on to Module 6 and in 6.1, which is split into four parts because there's a going further section at the end, we're going to be learning about algebraic expressions. We're going to be simplifying algebraic expressions and more complex expressions. For these multiple percent problems, just remember to do each percentage separately added to the original amount, and then add them all together at the end. Have a great day. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you join me for Module 6. Bye.